to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. This is why we act the way we do. And with our hands lifted up, we will worship our king and with our hands lifted up we come before you rejoicing with our hands lifted up to the sky and the world wonders why we just tell them we love in our king oh we just tell behind all that we do behind the preaching behind the singing behind the creativity may we remain motivated by our love for you and may the nations know that we love you help us tonight grant us grace in the name of jesus christ amen mina god bless you good morning hallelujah please do me well before you sit to just honor my friend and brother pastor petrock thank you so much and your dear wife i love you with all my heart i salute every great man woman of god every politician every captain of industry here represented particularly the pfn chairman and his dear wife i honor you may god bless you and every is here inside i saw such a crowd of people outside remarkable so many people outside god bless you those outside can you shout a loud hallelujah i hope they can hear me praise the lord and those following online may the lord bless you and honor you in jesus name this is a night vigil is it okay if we take a few minutes to pray i believe in prayer I really do and so we'll just take a few minutes to pray and then I'll just share a few truths from God's Word because it is the Word of God every encounter in his presence is also an encounter with his sent word not just the available word the sent word hallelujah and then we we'll trust that the Lord will just give us visitation tonight and then that will be it for it i pray that god will grant us grace in jesus name so please rise if you can we'll take a few minutes to just pray in the spirit it is important to pray the bible says he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17 says pray without ceasing it doesn't mean to pray from morning till night it means to be consistent in your prayer hallelujah to be consistent in prayer so with the few minutes that we have i'd like you to just lift your voice if you have the faith to connect with someone by your left and right that will be fine please lift your voice outside inside the auditorium i'd like you to begin to pray in the spirit for a few minutes asking the lord for edification that he will build up our spirit man this is how we build capacity in the spirit Kreto shalaka ta pranta gede balako shkadia, skade baranto sade gede balakata, shabrende gede pranti gede balaka supranti gede balada ba, pranta kata pranti gede balaka to sade prege di balada, kim pranti skosi kata shalako skade pranti gede balako siata. Are you praying? Don't be distracted. Focus on Jesus and pray for your growth, for your edification. Sane katalakos data brandegede bakatusia. 
Shida Belekete Brondes Kedi Balata. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Sede Barantas Calibratica Baruses Yata. In the credit of the Balakatos Yata Baj. Sade Barakatos Sade Brende Gede Bede Gede 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 Ba. He Mata Jalakata Brende Gede Balata Bus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let me just strengthen us with one scripture to give us capacity and the zest to pray the more. Luke chapter 9 and verse 29. One of the most fundamental reasons why we pray in the kingdom, more than a platform for receiving and making petitions, the Bible says, and as he prayed, the he being Jesus, it says the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistering. And when you read the verses afterwards, it was in that place of prayer that he had a voice and he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. You see that? And he said, I have glorified him and I will yet glorify him again. I have glorified him and I will yet glorify him. This is my beloved son. He says, hear ye him. I have glorified him. I will yet glorify him. There is a relationship between prayer, the voice of God, and your glory. I'd like you to be determined. This is part of the meeting. Obtain the grace to pray. Are we together? Knowing that your prayer is granting you the grace to build capacity. In the place of prayer, you draw inspiration. In the place of prayer, you evolve to higher spiritual versions of yourself. Lift your voice again in one minute and begin to pray. Please pray. Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Will you show us the ancient path? Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter your end. Shalabarakatosa de Brende Gelekatai. Raka, Ela Barakatosia da Balada Badakatos. Brande Gebarada Ziatata. Shede Belekate Brande Gede Balakatosia. Shabarantes get the brandy gibaratus kati brada kata. He na bakatus shala brandy get the lakau shadia. He mashada barakata brandy get the belakatus. Kabakatus abrandas get the lekatus aziana haskada. Embrakata baratus kate lekata brande kate belada bo. Shete belakate brande kate balada baladus. Are you praying? Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. While while I sat back just listening to Pastor Pete share on the spirit of fear, I I began to just meditate on the truthfulness of what he was saying and praying within my heart. The believers here represented would really believe in the truths that he was saying. Fear has kept many people from fulfilling their god ordained destinies there are many people by prophecy they should be at certain levels right now but fear has kept them down fear is a dangerous spirit in fact 
fear is the spirit that ushers every other spirit they go after fear it opens the door you are my hiding place you always fill my heart with songs of deliverance whenever i am afraid i will trust in you i will trust in you let the weak say i am strong in the strength of the lord i will trust in you i will trust in you let the weak say i am strong in the strength of the lord i feel like singing one more song please take it higher for me i hope you will know the song i praise you i praise you oh lord listen this is not a special number i want you to think of your life and think of god's faithfulness as you sing this song where he's taken you from where you are now and where he's taking you to sing that song with this understanding are you ready now we're going to start again it's not a special number at all let it be from the depth of your heart with understanding for some of you he's taken you from the pit and you may not yet be in the palace but you're not where you used to be i praise you i praise you oh lord i praise you i praise you oh lord in my life lord i see what you're doing one more time lord i lift my hands in praise of your name i lift my hands in praise one more time lift your hands lift your voices together and let's bless the lord this morning i praise you i praise you I praise you, I praise you, oh Lord, in my life, Lord, I see what you're doing, one more time, Lord, I in my let me tell you a secret listen this is a vigil let me tell you something do you know the reason why many people experience a level of lifting and then for a long time it looks like other doors don't open in succession because they do not understand that gratitude is a ladder in the spirit gratitude is more than acknowledging the faithfulness of god it is your path to the next level your ability to intentionally recognize the goodness of god he gave you a cup of tea yesterday and you celebrate and thank him as if nothing else is coming and he says i will add bread to that tea and you worship him and then he will add whatever it is i tell you why many people do not see the hand of god in succession they are not grateful it's easy to ask it's easy to complain it's easy to see what is not there but this morning 
if it is just five minutes i want you to forget about what you think he has not done he has done great things take your eyes away from every challenge every sickness take your eyes away from every disappointment take your eyes from, away from every financial trouble every demonic oppression focus on jesus and give him quality thanks this morning I like what the song says. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. I will bless the Lord. My soul and know that is within me. Bless your holy name. You have been faithful, O God, and we choose to say thank you. Some trust in horses and others chariots. But we trust in the name of our God. You have kept us from January right till November. You have granted us grace. You have granted us peace. We choose to see what you are doing. For the things you have done. And the battles you have won. Only you are worthy of my praise. I magnify your name for the things you have done and the battles you have won. Only you are worthy of my praise. I magnify your name. I glorify your name. I magnify your name. I magnify your name. We're still thanking him. Can you list the things he has done and say thank you? Thank you for health. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for increasing me in ministry. Don't be silent. Don't be silent. Don't be silent. Please go ahead and worship him. Don't be tired. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. And I will not be silent. I will always worship you. As long as, as long as I am breathing, I will always worship you. One more time, let it come from the depth of your heart. And I will not be silent. to our hearts this morning and I pray that you will change our lives in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen listen I believe with all my heart that this is already a prophetic word for someone that what you may need 
is not new prayer points what you may need is an acknowledgement of what he has done it is very easy in the kind of world we live to take away your eyes from the faithfulness of jesus as you hear the news as you see what is going around sometimes these things can be cloud us and then we we fail to see that you have to be alive first to feel the impulses of what is happening in your world I receive text messages about praying for people who are probably dead and they are trusting them to come back to life or something usually when people die like this they try to reach me attempting to pray for the people i have an average of this almost every day without exaggeration out of the text messages there is at least one person releasing their faith saying rich apostle it's not too late we believe that there can be and that already is more than ministry that is a reminder every day that i have the opportunity to be at the other side of life where i can even minister to people i don't take life for granted I am a very grateful person are we together many of you today you pass through the same road i know that we say it casually i'm showing you why many of us do not see the faithfulness of god beyond certain levels we think gratitude is for children and you are right children who understand the faithfulness of their father many times i feel guilty even asking god for anything i look at my life and in the place of prayer i just say lord i thank you if you never bless me again in this life i still owe you my life i owe you my gratitude you have given me the reward and the honor of many lifetimes in one already if you never do anything for me again you see the more you know god the more you really forget about ministry and start focusing on your relationship and your love for him at this point in my life every time i stand before people i many times forget that there are people the consciousness of his faithfulness and my desire to just begin to worship and even forget about who is looking is what he's done for me i'm praying i'm saying it again for someone here you came for shout and the message god is giving you already is you've been taking my faithfulness for granted you've been taking my faithfulness and my mercy the love i have given you both what you have prayed for and what you did not pray for and yet you take your eyes away from it i have learned as a ministry to be grateful and to express it with the same passion i express my needs to him you have to express gratitude with the same passion that you express when you were crying for that answer you cannot spend three hours asking god for breakthrough and spend two minutes and say thanks no your gratitude has to match the gravity of what was given this is not my message oh i just came on stage and i believe that the lord is emphasizing this because many times challenges becloud god's people from being grateful and thankful and intentionally consistent Na girma ma sunanka ubangi ji ni na loka ka sunanka ubangi ji ka hisaya ho na girma ma sunanka ubangi ji ni na loka ka sunanka ubangi ji ka hisaya ho na kir mama sunanka ubangi ji i'll raise your banner high i'll shine your light so bright i'll sing in honor of you na toka ka sunanka ubangi ji kaisa ya ho na 
ke mama sunanka ubaingiti na toka ka sunanka ubaingiti ka isaya bo na ke mama sunanka ubaingiti grant us the grace to be and remain grateful people in the name of jesus that we will leave this place tonight with a culture and an attitude of gratitude in jesus name i pray god bless you please be seated if you can again it's my joy to be here amen by wisdom oh god heaven's gates open up with understanding you order the seasons creating day and night turning darkness into light arranging the stars to your pleasing they've come i'm spotting you here can you sing that song for me i just sense it in my spirit Blessed are you, o Lord our God, eternity's holy King. Blessed are you, o Lord our God, whose words brings on the evening. Baraku we Adonai Amevora le olam vaed baraku en adonai amevora le olam vaed by wisdom O oh god heaven's gates open up with understanding you order the seasons Renewing day and night, turning darkness into light, arranging the stars to your pleasing. But a cool hallelujah hear me the lord is speaking to someone here that you are coming to the end of your season of training please listen to me there are many of you who inside and outside the call of god is upon your life and many of you for years now god has prohibited you from doing anything no programs no meetings you don't have anything. you don't have any ministerial title but you've been in the cave of adulam praying fasting building some of you are workers in church and while you are working in the ushering department say there is a strong apostolic and prophetic mantle that is it's been predestined over your life hear me i'm speaking to you by the spirit it doesn't mean your training is over but you are about to step into what the bible calls your season of appearing I believe this with all my heart this may not be a word for everybody but there are people god has so dealt with you you have been through seasons of prunings some of you do not even understand the name of what has been happening between you and god lord what is the meaning of this when others are going forward he will tell you to wait when others are eating he will tell you to turn the plate upside down many of you may have been invited for ministrations and he prohibited you from going he said stay the kind of breed that i'm raising requires stature and power in the spirit if you go the way you are half baked you will be tired before the sun arises and so he's been dealing with you men and women different dimensions of ministry from the prophetic to the intercessory ministry to the ministry of prophetic psalmistry songs that are not just special numbers but are loud and honey what is the relationship between the prophetic and locust and wild honey he, he did not have a normal life 
it is a price for greatness god would destabilize normalcy in your life you cannot be normal and anointed mm -mm. Mm -mm. hear what i'm saying i'm speaking to you by the spirit this 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 word will come like a tornado to your spirit man because god is beginning to tell you i am not raising you just for a city i am the kind of training is not just for your family oh saul i disguised you using the issue of um of your father's donkey missing but it's not about the donkey it's about an encounter with samuel to receive a mantle that will make you king one day there are many of you seated here there is a the, the, the end time healing move you see this this healing ministry that our father spoke about some of them have gone to be with the lord now where do you think those mantles are those mantles don't go to heaven mantles don't leave earth to heaven those mantles have been trailing destinies some of you here men and women you may think you are somewhere locked up in mina but prophecy has been following you like a guided missile i'm telling you hear me i'm speaking to you by the spirit you are stepping into seasons where there are certain anointings and mantles that will just rest upon your life regardless gender regardless earthly qualification because you see the way god qualifies men is not the way men qualify men i'm speaking to someone by the spirit for some of you when your season is over god will move you out of this city believe me he has prohibited you from moving every arrangement to go out has refused to walk because his hand is upon you for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom i choose the way of the lord the last few weeks have been even me myself i know that i'm coming to an end of a season in my life because there are things that god does there are there are certain activities of the spirit around the life of a man that can show you that you are coming to the end of a season a new dimension of glory a deeper level of consecration and power and sacrifice and a higher standard of dealing with the spirit this is how mighty men are made in the kingdom i came tonight more than just charging you it's an impartation i came to become a funnel that a, a kind of wine will rest upon someone that god will make sense to your staying awake this morning so that it will not just that be that you wasted, you wasted your time you came to, to watch, watch great people come to bless you in various ways you are immersed in a glory and whilst you are seated there in the midst of what i'm saying the holy ghost is going to be speaking to you pay attention to this because this is a word for you out of my belly shall flow rivers rivers of living water yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. Halabashada, out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. Out of my belly shall flow rivers. Rivers of living
Hallelujah. Before we continue, I want you to pay 27. attention. There are 27 people the Holy Spirit is showing me. The ministry of prophetic intercession. There is a grace and oil coming on you now as I'm speaking. God is going to be bringing you into that ministry. Dimensions of prophetic intercession. The grace to fold onto the four horns of the altar and begin to pray. Not in the public view. God will hide many of you in homes, in rooms, in places of retreat. 27 people, men and women together. I declare may that grace, whether you are inside, whether you are outside, may that man to rest upon your destiny. 27 people, prophetic intercession, the grace to intercede for nations. God will give you faces of individuals and you will stand to pray for them. Please help them. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Kadosh, 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 you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you ancient Zion King. Break forth, thou fountains of the deep. And we can't You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty in this place. Mighty in this place. You are mighty in this place. Mighty in this place. You are mighty in my life. Mighty in my life. Mighty in my life. I'm saying it again one last time. Many of you are at the bridge of an old season and a new one. Hear what I'm telling you. I'm speaking to you by the Spirit. You have exhausted the grace that is upon your life. You have encompassed that mountain long enough. Some of you, God is going to begin to subject you through seasons of fasting. And prayer because there is a new wine that needs to come upon your destiny for the journey that is ahead for the journey that is ahead for the journey that is ahead Prophetic intercessors. God is restoring the mantle of prayer over me now. This is what I'm hearing. There is a restoration of the mantle for prophetic intercession many of you here god is going to start calling you no name no nothing is not a ministry but it's a platform for genuine intercession and prayer there are men of god within your city and respectfully speaking god is challenging us to get to incorporate the ministry of prayer and take it seriously when the ministry of prayer is engaged with understanding it can produce power and might
just help those under the anointing it's not time to bring them out now i came with a burden of the spirit upon us Hallelujah. I wanted to give the prophetic word after the session of teaching, but if this is all that God wants and He can allow to do, but I want to give you a scripture that the Lord gave me while I prepared for this program. One of the things that He's doing in this place Ezekiel chapter 12. Ezekiel chapter 12. I had to write it down from verse 21. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, what is that proverb that ye have in the land of Israel, saying, The days are prolonged, and every vision faileth? 23. 23. Tell them therefore, thus saith the Lord, I will make this proverb to cease. And they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel. But say unto them, the days are at hand. And the effect of every vision. That that proverb, that there is so much delay in my life and destiny. It seems I'm waiting forever. It says, say unto them, you will no longer have to use this proverb again. Because God is going to be compressing time. And he's going to be giving life to that vision. Are you blessed now? Now for my teaching. First John 5 and verse 4. Please sit down. Just be sensitive to the impartation that happens. Bring us to higher levels, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith the subject of faith faith in God and the dynamics of engaging the faith of God to produce victory in the life of the believer I think we talk a lot about faith and in all fairness to ministers of the gospel I think we have done well to bring the consciousness of such a phenomenon and such a force to bear in the body of Christ. But I think that the dynamics of the operation of faith has been seldom understood by even respectfully speaking many who teach it. The Bible tells us that among the arsenals for victory that the believer has been given, there is one cardinal arsenal he calls it the victory not the tool not the weapon that this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith and so the subject of faith for the believer as a principal tool for establishing the victory that has been wrought for us in Christ can never be overemphasized. And believers, hear me. In the days that we live in, these are days that will test the sincerity and the genuineness of your understanding this subject of faith. There are many who have claimed to understand it. There are many who propose to understand it. But very few people have learned to command results by engaging faith. 
so lend me a few minutes this morning and hopefully god would grant us a better understanding according to colossians chapter 1 and verse 9 paul was mentoring the church in Colossae, and he began to pray that they grow in three realms of knowledge number one that they be filled with the knowledge of his will number two that they be filled with all wisdom and number three that they be filled with spiritual understanding the principal assignment of the god of this world beyond oppressing people with sicknesses and the rest the primary assignment of the god of this world is to blind the minds of people so that they do not sustain the level of spiritual understanding it takes to reign and to rule as you know by now that there are two dimensions to kingdom living there is the prophetic dimensions reality as seen from god's perspective and then there is the man the experiential manifestation realities that are now manifest by reason of engaging your faith just help those under the anointing please are we together now so the bible says this is the record it's a testament that god had given us eternal life and that this life is in his son so that whosoever has the son has life and we know and we have been taught that the life we have received in christ is an overcoming life this is not a church theology this is a fact from scripture that we have been given the life that overcomes an all surpassing life but just merely knowing it as a reality from scripture may never bring us into that experience Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 says, Having the understanding darkened, it says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Why? Because of the blindness of their heart. It was for this purpose Paul began to pray over the church in Ephesus. From chapter 1, you read from verse 17. Praying that the eyes of our understanding being enlightened that we may know god may grant unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him that our eyes being flooded with light amplified says that we may know the word know there does not just mean awareness oneness that brings you to become one with the thing that you are trying to know There is a lot of spiritual ignorance in the body of christ i tell you sincerely well-meaning believers who love jesus with all their hearts and let me tell you your christian experience will remain a frustrating one when your life is full of realities as revealed from scripture but never find expression in your life it is dangerous to know what should be and not sustain the intelligence to make it manifest i know god should prosper me i know that principalities and powers and yokes should not have dominion over me i know i should make progress in my life i know i should excel but being able to walk in the reality and the experience of this is why we are here to know what god has in store for you is one thing but to walk in the experience of it deuteronomy chapter 28 the first 13 verses if we look at it very quickly a a a sample of god's intention for us because the basis of the believer's victory listen to me the basis of the believer's victory in this kingdom is within the confines of what god has said the only thing god does is what he says not what he wants whatever god has not said he will not do it not that he cannot do it he will not do it the protocol of his might is that his power follows his words listen carefully his power does not just follow his intention the protocol of administering the power of god is that if his word does not precede his power will not follow genesis chapter 21 maybe let's look at it and then we'll, we'll come back to deuteronomy 28 genesis chapter 21 verse 1 and 2 look at this it says and the lord visited sarah as he had said 
he didn't visit sarah as she wanted he didn't visit sarah as the situation necessitated he visited sarah as he had said and he did unto sarah as he had spoken that is the protocol of administering the power of god you want to get the power of god to move you must get the word that backs that power verse 2 says for sarah conceived and bare abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which god had spoken to him back to deuteronomy 28 now what has god said concerning you and me it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord thy god to observe and to do all his commandments which i command thee this day that the lord thy god will set thee on high say amen shout it again that the lord will set thee on high above the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you joshua selman and overtake you if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the lord thy god verse 3 blessed shall thou be in the city blessed shall thou be in the field blessed shall thou be the fruit of your body and the fruit of your ground and the fruit of your cattle the increase of thy kind the flocks of thy sheep blessed shall be thy basket and thy store do you know what that means i can teach all night from verse 5 there is a difference between your basket and your store verse 5 please give me verse 5 your basket is what you put the grains in your store is where you keep it both need to be blessed if your basket is blessed and your store is not blessed you are still in trouble your basket and your store verse 6 blessed shall thou be when thou come in there are people who only are blessed when they are coming in but the others he says blessed shall thou be when thou goest out seven the lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee because there is a relationship between enmity and the blessing so he did not negate that in revealing his counsel to you blessed shall the lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before your face they shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways the lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thy hands to do he shall bless thee in the land which the lord thy god giveth thee three more verses the lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto thee if thou shalt keep the commandments of the lord thy god and walk in his ways all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the lord and they shall be afraid of thee 11 and the lord shall make thee plenteous in goods in the fruit of the body in the fruit of thy cattle in the fruit of thy ground in the land which the lord swear unto thee verse 12 and the lord shall open unto thee his good treasure to give unto you rain to give the rain unto thy land in his season and to bless all the work of your hand and thou shalt lend to many nations and not borrow read verse 13 if you are a christian one to read and the lord shall make thee the head and not the tail and thou shalt be above only shout only shout only only is a very instructive statement it didn't say you shall be the head he said you shall be the head only and thou shalt not be beneath the bible does not say the tail there it says you will not be beneath because the tail of an animal is not the lowest part of that animal you shall not be beneath if thou shalt hearken to the commandments of the lord thy god which i commanded this day to observe and to do so god has spoken great things concerning his zion he's spoken great things concerning us our confidence is based on what he has said because what he has said gives us guarantee that there is a measure of his power that backs what he has said remember what i just taught you the power of god cannot move in the direction where his word has not gone 
the power of God always follows the word of God. Habakkuk chapter 3, a popular scripture. Let's read verse 3 and 4. Amplified if possible. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 3 and 4. Is God helping you this morning? Habakkuk chapter 3 from verse 3 and 4. The Bible says, God came from Taman and the Holy One from Mount Param. It said his glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. Amplified puts verse 4 in a beautiful way, but that's all right if it's just King James we have. It says, and his brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hands. And Amplified says that from that horn, the light that comes from that horn, there was the hiding place of his power. So God's power is hidden in his light. Everywhere you see the light of God, that is where his power is going. What is faith? Let me talk a bit about faith and then we'll pray. What exactly is faith? Number one, faith is absolute confidence in God. Absolute confidence in God. Derived from your encounter with his word. Faith is absolute confidence in God. That is derived from your encounter with his word. Faith is absolute confidence in God derived from an encounter with his word number two what is faith faith is the action that you take as proof that you believe and you trust God faith is the action that you take not just the believing the action that you take as proof that you believe God as proof that you trust him Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 to 7 particularly 5 and 6 says trust in the Lord with all thine heart it says and lean not on thy own understanding but 6 says in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path 7 says be not wise in your own understanding or eyes fear the Lord and depart from evil so the Bible says to trust in the Lord and it says to do so with all your heart that faith is absolute confidence in God derived from your encounter with his word number two faith is the action that you take as proof that you trust God as proof that you believe God four times in scripture the Bible tells us that the just shall live by faith. Popular scriptures. Just write it down for sake of time. In Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4. Habakkuk 2 and verse 4. Romans chapter 1 and verse 17. Romans chapter 1 and verse 17. Same rendition. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 11. The just shall live by faith. And finally Hebrews chapter 10 and verse Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 38 all of these four renditions will tell you that the just the justified lives in this kingdom by faith like car runs on fuel like a wall clock runs on a battery no matter how beautiful the wall clock is if there is no battery that powers it it cannot function the just shall live by faith in Mark chapter 11 from verse 22 to 24 Jesus himself was speaking expressly and he was the one who gave an instruction to the disciples and by extension to believers have faith in God Men like Papa Hagen will interpret this as half the faith of God. 23. He shows us the character of Bible faith. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say, so there is a saying as proof of faith, be thou removed 
and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass the bible says he shall have whatsoever he saith 24 therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them someone say faith now let me tell you this for every prophetic destiny in christ whether financially relationally ministerially faith is a principal requirement for converting prophecy to experience you will require faith in the equation of your exploits in this kingdom now most believers have prophecy over their head most believers have prophecy over their destiny but the dynamics of faith to release them to that point in experience there are many people for instance who have the destiny of kingdom financiers there are many men and women of god according to god's predeterminate counsel they shouldn't be small there is a grace upon them for nations and for territories but they may never walk in the experience of that reality why because many people have not seen the value of faith as far as the victory of the believer is concerned one of the principal weapons of victory tools for victory given to the believer is faith the just shall live by faith romans chapter 10 and verse 19 very quickly now takes us further in the subject of faith romans chapter 10 did i get that is it 17 or 19 help me so then faith comes please help me i think i missed the, the verse thank you 17. look up please the bible says so then faith cometh everyone please shout it say faith cometh faith. one more time say faith cometh faith. that means faith is alive and it is mobile the bible here personifies faith like a messenger who you can call and he can come anything that can move must be alive the bible says faith comes and that the mechanism that brings faith to the believer look up please the faith that walks in the is the faith that has come not the faith that is coming the faith that is coming does not produce results it is the faith that has come the money that is coming does not buy things it is the money that has come for many people we are attempting to use the faith that is coming for exploits listen carefully so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of god so faith comes by hearing the second hearing there is not just hearing and hearing no there is the hearing of awareness and there is the hearing of understanding two realms of hearing there is the hearing of awareness but there is the hearing of understanding are we together now so the bible says faith can come like money can come like a car can come as a vehicle you can stand at the junction waiting for a car to pick you the goal is not to remain in the car the goal is to use the car to get to your destination but the car comes and you rejoice because that is the vehicle allotted to pick you you see that now when i was coming here you made arrangement for a vehicle to bring me here and my goal was not to remain in that vehicle forever but i was happy when i saw the vehicle why the vehicle was the guarantee that i would arrive here are we together now so when i entered that vehicle i entered with joy and i enjoyed watching the vehicle walk and when it got to my destination it dropped me to come down that's how faith is the vehicle that moves you from prophecy to manifestation man of god the vehicle that moves you from two numbers to a nation the gospel the, the the vehicle that moves you from mediocrity to notoriety is faith not just blind connection is faith now let me teach you the dynamics of faith because this is i think that most people 
really do not understand the subject of faith and i don't claim to know everything about it but i can tell you if you pay attention to what i'm about to share with you your faith will step into another level you will shake this unbelief that keeps keeping people poor justifying mediocrity justifying a weak and a defeated christian life believe me i know what i'm saying bible faith is based on two principal attributes of god you want to operate the kind of faith that our fathers gave us you want to operate the kind of faith that has helped our fathers to do exploits the bible in hebrews 11 begins to give us the archive of men and women who walked by faith and it starts by saying now faith is it calls faith a substance listen carefully and don't be tired of this teaching there is a revelation you need to get it calls it the substance of things hoped for it calls it the evidence of things not seen it says for by it elders obtained a good report that creation verse 3 happened even through faith verse 4 it says by faith abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than cain verse 5 it says enoch was translated look at the things the possibilities that happen on account of faith verse 6 it says without faith it is impossible to please god why because whoever must come to god must believe first that he exists and then that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him now please look up believers the faith that walks is predicated on two principal qualities of god number one is his integrity bible faith is hinged on the fact that god is a god of integrity please write it down the integrity of god in numbers chapter 23 and verse 19 i think i've shared something like this here numbers 23 and verse 19 please look up the first five words if you can read it with me let me have your attention and please let's read together the first five words as you see projected ready one to read god is not a man one more time please god is not a man this is a very instructive statement he's saying god is not a man he became a man but he is not a man god is not a man that he should lie wow now right there this is a revelation about men he's telling you that men lie they don't lie because they are bad they lie because they are men that that possibility is not in god god does not lie and tell you sorry i was only under pressure god is not a man the weakness of men that will compel lying is not in him neither the son of man that he should repent hath he said and shall he not do it this is his credentials here hath he spoken and shall he not make it good so everything he says is what he can do everything he speaks is what he can make good say amen. amen so if you want to operate bible faith ladies and gentlemen please hear me because the days that come the days that we're living now will be days of men and women who really really have faith oh we are both who got it so well when he sang he said these are not the days of elijah these are not the days of all of these people these are our days they have lived theirs they they use their faith and they purchase those possibilities now the turn is ours we can use their stories for inspiration but their stories will not give us results it is our understanding so that our children will also use our stories to inspire them to have faith it is not another man's story that gives you faith it is your understanding and your engaging the word of god look up please sooner or later man of god 
you will have to view sooner or later you will have to pay for certain bills that will require faith sooner or later you're going to have to believe god for impossible things that are not affordable as far as the realm of men is concerned i'm telling you this is what has separated people into all kinds of cadres time will fail me says to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak, men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions, women who received their dead back to life. This is the victory that overcomes, dear businessman. This is the victory that overcomes, dear man of God. How will the ministry grow by faith? how will your influence spread to the nations by faith how will your background not be an an impedance to your advancement by faith how will the nations call upon the name of the lord through your life by faith it takes faith the alternative to faith is a life of struggle and frustration and a mechanical approach to growth and lifting that is not what we're called to do faith every time i have the opportunity to fly as i look down and i look at cities and communities and you see how small they look and i'm watching with wonder and shock and saying the beauty and the might of god if from just an elevated altitude just a few thousand feet above sea level i can look at a horizon and see how small it is imagine how high and mighty god is and how he looks at everything you must be able to sustain god's dimension of vision to rule your world you cannot have a small mind that has been tampered and further darkened by background poor understanding of scripture and excel in life you will only end up getting angry and jealous and envious of people who are making it can i tell you everyone a man of god says has a high calling in christ but it takes faith to walk out your salvation with fear and trembling are you hearing what i'm saying now yes sir this is a victory that overcomes even your faith <laughs> i don't like to tell my stories it's not something i like but i remember when god sent me to abuja and he said okay it's time you're going to move to abuja now i've had the opportunity to talk with pastors and council pastors and they have cried and cried over ministry in abuja number one because of the financial implication of living in that territory and doing ministry in that territory and then quite honestly the complexity that you know comes around the entire ministry within that region and when god sent me there i was happy where are you going to hold where are you going to get the auditorium where will you get the resources to do all of that uh -uh. that is not my responsibility that is the owner's responsibility stewards listen to me stewards are only concerned about management are you seeing that now it is the owner that has the responsibility for bringing that innovation and i remember when i went there i stood outside and i looked and i said no the lord instructed me to get the map of abuja the map of nigeria the map of africa and the map of the world they were on my dining table for a long time every time i'm praying i look at it i sat down and not sounding arrogant i don't mean to sound arrogant but i looked at the map of abuja and i saw that there were six local governments 3.6 million people and i said i mean this is this is this is this is easier than where i'm coming from that's what i told myself based on light not based on arrogance I did not see any hindrance whatsoever by any reason listen i did ministry by the grace of god in the zazel emirate if you know anything about zaria that is the seat of you know the whole islamic practice and we covered the road for 10 years because of overflow it was the grace of god so i had seen the hand of god and when god was sending me there i was happy i wouldn't sit down and be asking stupid questions lord how will you come through no this is the victory that overcomes 
even our faith where will the people come from faith cometh, and it comes with everything it can pull faith does not come alone the bible just says faith comes but when it comes you will see that it's dragging every other thing too are we together now yes i remember the auditorium that we use when i'm sharing this to inspire you not not i remember when i was told of that auditorium was big huge you know about the most expensive auditorium in the entire city and then this is our site overflows and every other place and without exaggeration i tell you the price for one single use may probably run many conferences just one one use one week and when i sent a few people to discuss with the owner of the place he said no 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 i'm not giving it it, it it took a lot to build this place we're not giving it to church we're not giving this they will destroy it and yet i went to the place of prayer and the lord told me that was the place and i said that's it it's done i said just leave him he has been told that is it i was in enugu when the man called true story and he said for the first time in his life i hope i'm right on that that he had the voice of god speaking to him and said do not dare prohibit these people this is a move that is coming and it is a blessing even to you and the man called he was not feeling very strong so i decided let me go and see him for the first time and greet him i got to his office and there and then he called all the managers and we had a discussion and to god be the glory the rest is history god has honored himself beyond imagination say faith shout it say faith i'm saying this because some of you i don't mean to insult you but i'm here to tear down that mediocrity many of us are battling with things that are not giants your mind has magnified them 10 years trying to build that house two years trying to do this apostle how am i going to pay the school fees of my children how am i going to live my life lifetimes are so expensive can i tell you faith can elevate you to a point where it will be as though you are holding a charm in your hand faith there are no guarantees in life your guarantee is your faith dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye